There we go. I rebuilt the carburetor. Now it idles perfect. Nice and smooth. No vibrations, no knocks. We are beautiful. This baby's ready to go. Yeah, now we're really quiet. Oh, beautiful. Loving this. All right, so here's the Suzuki 6 on the old uh, kayak there. Fits on fine. It's going to be a little bit deeper, but not too much. Probably about three or four inches lost there, but that's okay. Fitment is good. This is going to be a problem. Uh, this blocker plate keeps the motor from sliding off. <laughs> and because my uh, the uh, clamp mounts are a lot wider on this one, I need to get a much bigger block so it doesn't fall off. Right now, this thing can kind of slide over the side. It's going to twist off like that. The prop is going to cut up my kayak. It's going to drop off, break my motor mount, and then the motor's going in the water never to be seen again. So that's kind of an issue. But other than that, baby looks sweet. You can see it's got a pronounced lean to it. Uh, my, even my two and a half has that. It naturally inverse like that uh it preloads the outrigger which uh, makes it even more stable which is good but with this added weight it's a little bit too much uh if i was going to keep this motor on there i probably would adjust the motor mount uh so it flattens out a little bit but i would still want that preload right here in the middle uh between the kayak and the outrigger all right fire baby up Oh yeah. Nice. Peeing good. Nice and smooth idle. Idles down nicely. Quiet. Nice. Go give this guy a try. It works, it works. Nice and smooth. Whoa, rooster tail. Whoa. Getting out of the channel here. This is definitely not the skinny water rig, but it's not too far down from my uh, other outboard, so that's good. This is a more of an open water outboard, I think. We're being good. Everything looks good. Let's try something new. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, reverse. That's new. <laughs> Look, my arm going backwards.
<laughs> Woohoo, look at me! I am backwards! That yeah, runs pretty good this way. Alright, we'll add a little torque to it, see what happens here. rudder down, less drag. That was a major success. I like this motor. <laughs> it runs good. It's a little bit heavy for this kayak and I really couldn't do too much because I had to lean on the throttle and hold on to it to make sure it wouldn't slide off because if it fell over, I mean, it would wipe this whole thing out. Kayak would get eaten up, motor mount would break and I'd lose the motor. So I definitely didn't want to do that on this trial run. But other than that, baby's golden. Now that the Suzuki six horsepower is a runner and I'm getting some confidence into it, just want to finish up a couple of things. Uh, one is the handle that was broken off there or I had to break off. Uh, I've got the new replacement here, so I'm going to install that. And then I also have an oil filter. So we did the in the bucket break in. I ran it for about a half an hour on the water. So now I'm going to change the oil and just make sure that's all good to go. So. Let me just do that real quick. Next, we're gonna change the oil on the bottom, on the handle side, you'll see this Allen head bolt here, eight millimeter. So we're just gonna take our wrench and loosen that up and drain the oil. Uh, this oil did the break in and the half an hour of running. Uh, since I did a full rebuild, I want to make sure any of the uh, particles from the break-in are removed right away. So even though this is honey colored, uh, it's still going to have the biggest chance of uh, contaminants in it, this first oil change. So I want to make sure we get it out. Unlike my little two and a half horsepower outboards, uh, the six has an actual oil filter, which is nice. So it's in this housing right here, two bolts and just pull it out. Once you take those two bolts off, the cover will pop off spring loaded and we just got to dig out this oil filter all right how to use two screwdrivers and chop stick it out and get past the uh, fuel line Ooh, that looking dirty that definitely time to change old new <laughs> All right, filters in, plugs in. Uh, now I'm just gonna fill it up with some oil. Recommended is uh, 1030 or 1040. Uh, I've got some really cheap uh, West Marine 1540 that I use in my general purpose outboard motors. So this will work fine until the uh, 20 hour break in. And then uh, I'll switch over to the uh, Suzuki lube stuff, the good stuff. So let me fill this guy up and then uh, we're pretty much done. All right, for the lower end unit, um, I'm just going to check the levels, make sure there's oil up to where it should be. And then when I do the 20 hour uh, oil change, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the oil, lower unit oil at the same time. That way I know, keep track of it. But there's the, I uh, already broke this one loose. That's the uh, check level. And then this is the fill level or the drain, but also where you fill it up. So you make sure your level gets all the way up until it starts peeing out this top hole. Then you know that it's filled. So I'm just going to take the top one off, stick a straw or something down in there to make sure I could touch oil. 
and then just go from there. So all I'm going to do is just got a stick there, something that I could push into the hole. And the oil should be right up to the top here, so I don't need to stick it way down. And yep, we've got oil there. Wow, it's like new. I wonder if it just got serviced not too long ago because that is clean looking oil. Really clean. Uh, so the two things I'm looking for are one, that it's filled to capacity, which this one is. And two, to make sure that it's not full of water or you'll, you'll get a milky colored oil, which means the water's gotten in there and mixed up. Or to the point where you just have water and all of the oil has uh, bled out, leaked out, and then you're really just dipping into water. But that is just clean oil there. So dang, really good. So here's the replacement handle I just kind of made. Uh, I had to go to Amazon to find this bolt here that has the eye head there. Um, then just ran a uh, stainless steel bolt through it. So that'll be the actual handle. This nut is actually a backing. And this I went ahead and tapped so that it screws on there. And then it'll butt up against this nut. And then that's how it's going to stay locked in there. So that is that, and then this is the replacements. And there we go, handle installed. Lots of grease, always grease. Salt water equals needing grease. So uh, there we go, we're all matched up again. All right, we're done. Uh, the only other thing I would maintenance change would be the spark plug. Um, it's firing up no problem. It idles smooth, it revs up smooth. It stays on uh, high rev smooth. So I'm not really having any issues, so no need to change it. Uh, these spark plugs are expensive. Uh, it's like 12 bucks. For my little Suzuki's, they're only like less than $5. So 12 bucks is a bit much. So I'm not even gonna worry about it until I run into a problem where uh, it starts getting a little bit of a miss, hard start or something, then I might swap it out, take a look at it. But the color on the plug looked good, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, I think this baby is done. So uh, let's go inside and talk about what are my plans for this guy. All right, so what's the future of the Suzuki 6 horsepower outboard? Uh, baby's running smooth now. Um, I definitely will put a couple of trips on it. I'll probably uh, adapt the red kayak. All I just need to do is put a, a stopper block between the two uh, clamps to prevent it from sliding off <laughs> on the side of it. And then it'll be good to go. Um, the main issue with that motor is the horsepower and second, secondly is the weight. Um, or actually it's probably more torque. So even on a regular boat, as you start hitting the throttle, it at uh, first will squat. And then if you have enough horsepower and you have the plates, it'll get it up on plane and then you're zooming right along the surface. Well, with my kayak, I can do the first part, add more torque and the back will squat. Uh, the problem though is that squat causes drag, okay? And I don't have any fins to make it kick back up. So it just more torque, deeper it sits. And that's why you see that water flooding over the back, which is not an issue because my kayak's hollow and it's watertight. But as it pushes down, it it creates drag. So more horsepower I put to it, the more drag it puts to it. And it equates out to no gain, basically. So I could probably go half throttle and I'm moving really good. And then once I get past that point, then that back starts squatting more. It causes more drag, slows it down, add more horsepower. It picks up speed, but then it drags. So it's a net loss gain and it's not really worth it to do it there. So that's kind of the reason there. Um, I'm looking for spots most of the time when I go from A to B. So getting there really quickly doesn't matter. I don't mind puttering around and checking things out and seeing stuff, sight fishermen. Uh, so the kayak stuff, I'll probably do a couple of trips, maybe out to the patcheries, maybe take it out to the reefs. If I really get on with it, then maybe take it offshore. Never knows. Um, originally, I was like, man, this extra horsepower is nice. Even up the aft throttle, I definitely get booking. So I thought, well, what would be perfect is uh, Suzuki makes a four horsepower. And I figured, oh, 25% weight loss gets me to that, that power band, four horsepower. And that'll work perfect. 
So I was checking it out, planning on just trying to find one and it would be good to have videos on how to fix that as well. But uh, then I looked and the weight of the four horsepower is exactly the same weight as the six horsepower, uh, 51 pounds dry weight. So I was like, you can get a four horsepower or six horsepower and they're the same exact dimensions. It just has one has a, a bigger displacement motor on it, more horsepower. So that's crazy and three or four hundred dollars price difference. So that's not going to help me because all I would be doing is getting less horsepower. So I would just could do the same by just reducing the throttle on the six horsepower. So that, that went out the door. And then I could go to a different manufacturer to find like a three or four. But I'd prefer to just not get over complicated. Just get really confident on these motors and that's fine with me. I probably won't leave the two and a half horsepowers. So my next big option is, and what I was wanting to do was uh, to get a little skiff that matches that motor. So my primary one looking for would be like a little solo skiff. Uh, but there's other manufacturers that make those little small skiffs as well. Step above a, a kayak, smaller than a micro skiff. Uh, you can paddle them, you can pull them, you could put a small outboard on them. Uh, and that was also a thought too, is that you can go to like the Ginu canoes or you can get a little bit bigger skiff and all that. But what I didn't want to do is pick up something that I was going to be underpowered with a six horsepower because then I'm in the same situation. I'm adding a lot more weight and I'm not adding the comparable horsepower. So it's going to be bogged down because I don't have enough horsepower. So stuff like those uh, solo skiffs and those smaller ones, and then I saw some hand-built ones as well, um, they're maxed out at like six horsepower, five or six horsepower. So that's perfect. Whereas you start going up to the Ginus and the, the larger micro skiffs, then you're like 30 horsepower is what they're rated for. And I'm gonna add a six horsepower and it, it just balances everything. So that just wasn't really what I was interested in. So what I think I'll do is keep an eye out for a little skiff like that. Um, just probably less than a month ago, I saw a, uh, a solo skiff sell for 750 here in Marathon. I just hadn't gotten into uh, getting that motor going yet, so I didn't know about buying it with a dead motor, then I'd be <laughs> really wasting money. But uh, I see they generally go for about two grand, uh, three grand with a motor, two grand, 1500 without. Um, in the, since I've had that motor, which has been, I don't know, three months or something, I've seen 750, 1500, just the skiff themselves. So I think if I am patient enough and the way the economy's going and people are back to work, they're not really going on the water anymore. The hassle factor of these little boats, people find out they don't really like them. Then, uh, I think I could probably find one in about a thousand to 1200 range and that would be good there. If I could find one of the other brands as well, there's quite a few other brands that make them um, or a home built one, I'll probably go that way. Um, and then what I would do is probably look for a little micro trailer um, and actually use it as a launch vehicle. I do have that trailer that I built and I use it just so I could park in the uh, boat ramp parking, but it's a full, it's not long full size, but it's a full size boxed uh, rails uh, full size tires, full size on metal, everything. So it's a, it's a heavy trailer. Um, I could tow it easily, but I don't want to be dropping back and then burning out my clutch, pulling that thing out, even though these things don't weigh very much. But if I get one of those really small ones with the small wheels on them, they've got aluminum frames. They're just really skinny. Um, and they don't weigh anything at all. That would work out perfectly matched up with one of those little solo skiffs or whatnot. Or what I would do is I could look for a really cheap pickup truck, a uh, little midsize. What I really want is the old school 80s or 90s mini trucks. Those would be perfect. And all I would do with that trailer and, that, and a truck would build it as a platform just for that skiff, where when that skiff's not on the water, it's on that trailer or on that truck. And that's all it's used for. It's just a cheap truck that you can just back down into the water and dump that thing off, pull off back into the water, flip it on real easy, maybe put a little a little electric winch on it so it's really easy to just roll up there and go and just make it like that where you can just back a truck down to the dirt edge of the road just like my kayak and not even need a boat launch. And it would just be a, a, a solo skiff or a skiff truck, 
a fishing truck. You could use it for anything else, but I would just have it a bare bones fishing boat truck, back of the truck type thing. And uh, I would do that or the trailer and then uh, sell it off as a package. I'm really not interested in the solo skiff. The only reason why I'm thinking about doing it is because I have that outboard. Uh, so that's what I would do. And that would interest me for a little while to play with. Uh, but I think I'm pretty sure I still would prefer my kayak setup. Uh, it's a little bit more maneuverable and useful for cross fishing. The third option is, is just to go out and pick up a little inflatable or a dinghy or something like that. Just something small and then uh, throw that motor on it and sell it to one of these uh, sailboats or uh, places out here. There's tons of them. The, the turnover on these little motors and these little uh, uh, inflatables or a little dinghy are just crazy fast. Uh, so I could do that really quick and just get the money for it and just be done with it. So that's my other option there. But anyways, that is where we're at. So I'm just going to take my time, see what happens. Uh, when those skiffs comes up, if it, if it doesn't come up this year, then I'll look at picking up an inflatable or dinghy. I see those all the time for a couple hundred bucks. Throw that motor on it and I could sell it for a couple grand. If I get that solo skiff, get a little trailer or even a truck, um, three, four thousand. And then uh, that, that motor's basically, I'm into it a couple hundred dollars. So it's all free money there. But uh, anyways, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching and keep an eye out for some Suzuki six horsepower kayak reef fishing. So anyways, I'll see you next video. Bye.